Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Bill Cable. I am the sector manager for art and design and creative media for Pearson BTEX levels two and three. Thank you so much for being here today for um, Digital Live Enabling Education Online by Pearson. While schools and colleges are closed, Pearson have been supporting teachers and tutors in making this change to everyday teaching online and help them find their new normal. Across the day, we've been joined by educators and industry experts who have been demonstrating their experience and offering support that will help educators from both schools and colleges get the best out of their learners. Before I introduce our next session, just a couple housekeeping points. All participants have the opportunity to send in questions via the chat box. There will be an opportunity to answer some during the session, and if we're not able to get to all of them or discuss them all, we'll follow up after the event. So without further ado, I'm now delighted to introduce Ross Beamish, Head of Digital Arts from Wycliffe College, who will talk about using students' own devices to create interesting digital content. Over to you, Ross. Thank you very much, Joel. Uh, as Joel has said, my name is Ross Beamish, and I'm teacher of medium film studies for 10 years and head of digital arts at Wycliffe College in Stonehouse, Gloucestershire. My specialty area is actually moving image. However, within our digital content production course, we through uh, Pearson, of course, we focus on photography, image manipulation, and e-magazine production. So as you're probably already aware, uh, the session purpose is fourfold. Firstly, to demo examples of apps and software that can be used to create interesting digital product using what the students are hopefully likely to have easier access to during the lockdown situation. Also, to model how you yourselves could demo these apps to your own students to create your own bespoke guides and creative challenges. To illustrate the wider application of skills these apps foster, and also the wider application of product that could be utilized across our subject of media, but also cross-curricular uses. And finally, to demo how this product could be presented easily on a digital portfolio, which can then be used for wider purposes outside of the course, such as university interviews or indeed job applications. Just some other notes of importance before we begin. I have a pre-recorded video guide of the apps and software, so there is no need to take notes necessarily as the video can be accessed after the event and there is a supplementary list with all the links of all apps and software covered within this video that accompanies it. You will be notified once these are available following the event. Most of the apps and uses demonstrated are purposefully easy to access and multi-platform where possible with fairly simple challenges, but these are easily adapted to make them more advanced and challenging for your learners. And following the video presentation, I have additional higher end free software and resource recommendations that can be used for learners who may have advanced beyond these apps presented and who also may possibly have access to higher end equipment or computers at home. The video we are about to play is around 23 minutes long and following we will have time for around 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A following if you have any questions. Please do raise any technical difficulties that you're experiencing during the presentation in the Q&A chat window, and we will attempt to resolve this for you. I hope that you enjoy the video I have prepared and that it may inspire some ideas that you could then promote in turn to your own learners. Hello, this video session is titled Using Students' Own Devices to Create Interesting Digital Content. My name is Ross Beamish. I am the Head of Digital Arts at Wycliffe College in Stonehouse in Gloucestershire. During this session, I am going to demo to you how to remotely model and deliver interesting creative digital content-based lessons and for learners to produce portfolios of product. This will be split into three main parts with one section dedicated at the end to rounding up some uh, general creative ideas. The main aims are to demo and model the software, to suggest subject context that these could be used in, and to suggest other creative uses of technology using available hardware that the students would hopefully have to have. 
Before we begin some small notes, these apps are totally free to access, although some do have additional subscriptions and payable content attached to them. These apps are multi-platform wherever available and I will make notice of those. And just a disclaimer, I have absolutely no affiliation to these apps, nor the developers. I should also actually like to say hi and uh, introduce myself face to face and point out that I'm primarily using an iPad 7 here with an Apple Pencil, although there's no need to have such high-end uh, equipment. In fact, a lot of these apps will run on much lower level equipment. So although I'm very lucky to uh, have such a setup as this one to do most of my work on, including this very edit, as it happens, most of the apps I used, I used using a three-year-old iPhone. And this session is therefore not only designed to give you some uh, ideas that you could share with your students, but also your students hopefully access to them uh, wherever possible, using the technology that they would hopefully have to hand, uh, and maybe even in their pockets. So this is the first piece of software I'm going to demo and hopefully give you some ideas from. It's called Photoshop Mix. You may have heard of it, but if not, it is a completely free version of Photoshop. You can see it on the website here. It's very basic, but it does what it needs to and can really give students an in into Photoshop if uh, they are novices or indeed need a bit of a refresh. So here's a classic creative uh, activity to do, um, easily able to be done on the, even a basic piece of software like this. Taking album covers and finding people within your household that even within lockdown scenario is absolutely fine. And then replacing the uh, faces, even with such classics as Ken, with uh, members of your household. Or if you want to kick it up a notch, why not go to movie posters to uh, just go a level higher? And of course, could not go without Back to the Future. In fact, I shall demo this one to you now of how to make it. So to begin with, you can either create a custom canvas or create a canvas size or dimensions and resolution from an existing picture. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. It's probably a good place to start because obviously I'm starting with a picture. Now I've kicked this into time lapse because you don't want to sit here for 20 minutes and watch me in real time do this. Um, this is one of the uh, good things of being able to use a piece of software like this, I think, is because you can get your students to get uh, really deep into something for a good period of time. I would say that this uh, this image here probably took me about um, 30 to 35 minutes to do. Of course, if a student is a little less uh, confident with it, they might take a little longer. Um, it's a good day's worth of work uh, with, a with a break as well, if you'd like to give them such a task to do. Now, this software is basic. It's basically Photoshop. Uh, version 1.1 I guess but that doesn't mean to say it doesn't have some degree of power and as you can see as I'm doing now as I'm inserting the faces and so forth I'm changing the levels I'm softening uh, the feathering around the outside and I'm just going through the different lighting uh, and color palettes to see what works to see how well I can match it and that in itself is a good skill to, to uh, be able to practice with your students Coupled with the fact that they'll probably be using a device like a phone or maybe an iPad, um, they can export it straight away into their uh, own photo libraries and take it on from there as we're going to after we've done this. So just to check that this has appeared as it should have after the export, there it is straight away in my photo album ready for the next creative task. So even with a basic version of Photoshop, here are some useful skills. There's basic image manipulation, there's of course an awareness of layers, and of course thinking in layers is very, very important in image manipulation, and an awareness of colour design, layout, and other such features. So as it happens, my specialty is in moving image, uh, but of course I run a department and teach a subject that revolves around image manipulation and specifically e-magazine design. So here's some subject context that you could consider in addition to just e-magazine design as we would. Um, I would imagine that this would be transferable to websites quite well, as well as moving image and video game design layouts. Just got one more creative idea I thought I'd throw into the mix on the end of this one. Before recording this video, I came across a website that showed some visual illusions, and so I thought I'd try it out in this software that we've just looked at. And uh, the effects are quite striking. Maybe you could test your higher-end students with coming up with their own creative idea here. So this is the second creative app I'm going to show to you and hopefully give you some ideas from. 
Uh, the first thing I should say is that despite rumours of it being on Android, uh, I believe if it is, it's a very weak and broken app. So really, the only one it's going to be working on currently are iOS devices, so iPhones, iPads, I guess iPod Touches. So as you can see, the basic premise is like a lot of apps currently, is to uh, do a hybrid between moving image and uh, still image. You can do pretty basic overlays, such as this one. Or get a bit more creative adding moving assets to otherwise still images, as I did with this very first one that I practiced with. Of course, it would only be a matter of time until we got some Star Wars in there. And as your students become more confident with this software, they can start practicing with things like uh, focus pulls and depth of field and other animated effects rather than simply what's on the surface. I should say here that some of the effects that I'm demoing are paid for versions, but the vast majority that will be demoed in uh, this section here will actually be free on purchase. You just have to download them when you download the app. So let's get stuck straight into uh, adding some animated assets to our previously photoshopped image. I should say here in uh, full honesty that this app can actually be quite frustrating. Um, as you can see here, I've put it again into time lapse because uh, you don't want to sit here again for 35 minutes while I'm doing this. But as uh, as I was mentioning, um, the software is at once really powerful and really cool and really amazing when you get the effect that you want. Uh, it is also incredibly frustrating. Uh, there are two features that this app does not have at present, despite all of the great uh, extraction things that you can see here and everything. It does not have an undo button, and it doesn't have a save project button. So uh, just please let your students know that in advance, because if, like me, you had to find that out the hard way, uh, you just wipe your finger across or your Apple Pencil across your project, and uh, you've accidentally wipes out half of your uh, your extraction it's very frustrating and also if the app crashes um, it probably didn't save it um, it's really annoying when you've spent 30 40 maybe even 50 60 minutes uh, creating something like this only to have the app uh, just delete your project because it can only store one at any one time having just moaned for what seems like about five minutes about it I really do rate this app. It's one of a few of uh, these types of apps out there that I think has a lot of power and a lot of potential uh, for our students to be able to get to grips with and also create something really cool. As you can see here, uh, you can export and I strongly recommend exporting as a video of at least 10 if not 20 seconds long and also back it up as an animated GIF. As with the previous app, it will pop your export directly out into your camera roll so you can just check it live there and then and uh, see if you're happy with it. And actually, uh, what you're looking at now is a slightly more refined version of that one. Uh, the one that I recorded had very sadly uh, crashed on me uh, as I was recording it. It was basically because my iPad was out of storage. So it only got the final couple of minutes of my recording. Um, but this app has a lot of power to it. It really is quite incredible the level of uh, creativity that you can squeeze out of this thing even with its foibles and its kinks. And of course it really does enhance just a simple two-dimensional image into something that's a lot more than the sum of its parts. However, it's not the only app out there that does this kind of thing. Pixeloop here is both on iOS and on Google Play stores and uh, animates things slightly differently by actually moving the, uh, the image that is native. Uh, but we also have Cinemagraph Pro, which works on a similar principle and is also multi-platform. So here are some useful skills that you can pitch to your students with. Uh, of course, it's a hybrid image video manipulation thing going on here. Uh, with that comes an advanced awareness of layers and working with them. And of course, because of the nature of this app, we're thinking now fourth dimensionally, so both in time and in space and in two second loops uh, ad infinitum. And once again, with uh, cross-discipline uh, uses and contexts, well, of course, massive use for e-magazines as we use them for, and website splash pages, um, marketing campaigns, I mean, this is primarily what they're designed for, and of course, target audience awareness, which of course is uh, often key of A-level media studies students' work, especially if your students are designing products that are targeted at their own demographic, 
it's quite incredible to see where these kind of cinemagraph or moving image uh, pieces of media are popping up all over the place, directly marketed at them. With that in mind, just one more creative idea to tag on the end. If you just wanted a kind of bite-sized version of this, um, perfectly useful app for creating uh, moving image social media idents, as I have here. Um, there's an unlimited number of different creations that you can do, layer up and uh, create more and more. The final showcase app is, is a much easier one to use, very much pick up and play really, and probably one you've already heard of because it was number one on the App Store a couple of years ago. It's called Prisma, and essentially what it does is it takes photography, uh, sends it off to the server, wherever that may be, and then uses an algorithm to change it into famous pieces of artwork, at least in style. So here's a nice project that you can do um, with your students or get them to do with their families. And that's simply to pose in the same uh, pose as uh, famous pieces of art. Um, then take the photo as closely as you can to it, using the same mise-en-scene and costume and so forth. And then use the uh, correct Prisma filter to swap it into something that resembles what you're looking for. So of course this one is the most famous painting in the world, as modelled by my daughter. It cost me £10 for her to do this. And uh, so I'm going to show you exactly how we created that in Prisma. The first thing to note and the most important, and please tell your students this, is that when they see this pop up with any number of very confusing subscriptions on there, uh, just swipe down, it will disappear. There was a time when there was a lot of functionality in Prisma that was free and it's moved, uh, I guess, thanks to the fact it's become very successful. Um, to a subscription based model but they're like the previous app are an awful lot of filters and things uh, that are free and in fact I'm just using the uh, completely free version here to show you um, so really it's a case of trial and error after you've imported your image you can uh, swipe through the different filters that are clearly visible at the bottom um, one thing that's quite neat that I I'm afraid I didn't quite show you here, is if you sw uh, swipe your finger left and right on the screen it actually uh, increases and decreases the effect of the uh, filter so you can have a bit of a hybrid going on. And uh, unlike on my iPad, on my phone, I could actually isolate the background away from the foreground uh, so I could have the background painted, the foreground painted or both painted as you can see here. And of course, just like Photoshop Mix, it can be exported directly to the photo album and then it can be incorporated into other apps uh, with layered creativity. So maybe a photo that's taken on Prisma can then be exported uh, into um, the moving image apps. And as I shall show you in a second, this is just one of any number of apps out there that are very powerful and that are free. So in regards to useful skills, uh, certainly promotes consideration of aesthetics. Of course, framing and composition is all important when it comes to photography. And further useful skills are planning of mise-en-scene, particularly with costume, makeup, uh, background design, and so forth. And very importantly, the directing of models to get the pose that you wish. Now for subject context, of course, e-magazines and website content, this is uh, tailor-made for. Uh, but just in general terms, photography and videography, uh, although this is still image, it still requires some similar principles, particularly with directing of talent uh, for videography um, and often very good practice for students to practice in uh, safe confines as this by directing their peers. Um, also cross-curricular potential for art and history links uh, should you wish to link up with other subjects or disciplines. So just to round the session off, um, although won't have opportunity to focus quite the same attention on uh, these apps or softwares or creative ideas as the previous three, uh, I thought it would be remiss of me unless I uh, shared these with you uh, for the reasons I shall show you. So here's three of many apps I could have picked for you uh, to demonstrate digital photography. Uh, we've got Snapseed, we've got Fimo Analog Camera, and we've got Darker and Swanko Labs. 
So Snapseed is one of the apps that you highly likely have come across in the past before, even if just seeing it on the App Store. And one of the great things about this is that it's both on the iOS App Store and on the Google Play App Store, partly because it's created by Google themselves. So as you can see, that it, it affords a high degree of uh, creative control over digital photography, um, everything from simple cropping right through to uh, color grading and uh, healing and so forth. And uh, with these photos, you can see just some of the effects that can be achieved. So of course, those apps revolve around uh, digital photography manipulation. Uh, but there has, over the last few years, been a growing trend in emulating analog photography. And this is a particularly strong app, also available on iOS and Google Play, that does just that. Now, there are loads of them out there of all sorts of different names and different prices. Uh, this one is a particularly strong one. It's got a very high user rating and it's very accessible. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of the effects in there are um, very comparable to what we'd expect from classic analog photography. It really is a good app to demonstrate to your students what the aesthetic differences can be like between digital photography straight from a camera phone and what a little bit of manipulation in an app like this can do. So now we've got two apps to the price of one here. The first is called Darker and this is one that we use in a photography club uh, that we run ourselves called iOS Photography Club in Department. And this actually combines features of the previous app uh, with a dark room, a digital dark room. If you just want to do the dark room on its own, we've got Swanko Lab here, which is uh, produced by Hipstamatic that no doubt you've heard of before. And effectively, it's a little bit like a, a simulator for a dark room uh, where you would select the chemicals and the mixtures in the, for the dark room and the fixes and so forth and um, see what gets produced. And of course, one of the great things about this, if you're doing a photography based uh, unit, is undoubtedly the students will need to know some of the history of photography and potentially image manipulation as well, including dodge and burn and so forth. And um, this really gives them some hands-on experience where they couldn't physically get into a dark room. But it's not all about photography. So here are some uh, videography apps that you might like to experiment with or try with your students. First up is an eight millimeter simulator. Um, there are loads of these apps out there on, on iOS and Android platforms. Uh, this one in particular is on iOS, but they all share similar functionality. Um, I love the way that you can swap out the eight mil film and you can even make it judder in the gate if you so wish. Complementary to this is uh, slightly more, uh, I'd say modern, it's not exactly modern, it's more like something from the 90s, um, but a VHS simulator, which is also fantastic, and it even has the janky zoom in there as well, uh, to give it that added aura of authenticity. Next up is a multi-platform app called Pablo, which uh, does blend video with photography uh, but in a completely different way unlike the apps that we saw before so th with this one it's all about light painting uh, which of course we can do in photography but this actually adds the motion element into it so uh, it's basically multiple exposures being captured in real time The final app I'd like to show you in the spotlight section is one that actually blew me away in terms of how powerful it could be. Um, this is verging very much on a professional, as you can see, BBC, ITV, Sky Sports. They've all used it one way or another in their independent film production. And that's something called Mavis, which essentially turns your iPhone into as close as it can be to um, a professional level camera, just in terms of the um, different functionality and the abilities that it has. So I'm just demoing it here live on my desk and um, you can see when I go into the app uh, I can change the exposure levels as I will in a second because obviously this is too dark which is much harder to do on a phone manually. Um, I can change the focus, I can pull the focus and it's got a nice shallow depth of field that I can pull on. Um, and although this is the free version which in itself is powerful enough and there are paid for sections um, you can do all of these different things like uh, set the white balance and 
the uh, the focal point and, and um, ISO and all of those kind of things that you'd really want in terms of controlling a camera. So I did say at the start that I would demonstrate how all of this could be put together into student portfolios. Uh, this is our department WordPress page, which is a relic of a bygone age. Uh, but what we have done here is we've got our students as part of our iOS photography club to create their own Wix pages where they can upload their photos as they take them from their phones directly or just upload them onto their computer and then take them from there onto their, their portfolios that they've got here. And um, then once a week we get together after we've set them one of the challenges from uh, one of the apps I've shown you and they demonstrate to us their work. Uh, this one was one that was recently um, entered into a local camera competition uh, which I was really proud of this student and it was done in app on one of the apps I've shown you today. Um, here is a, a, a second student of ours who has a penchant for um, photography of flowers. And I should mention that these three boys are, none of them are sick formers. They are either year 11 or in this case a year 10 boy. And uh, being able to experiment with these creative apps gives them a really great safe space to be able to do things like experiment with the darker filter here, uh, which I think was one of his most fantastic photos in our club. And then a third person I'd like to showcase to you is uh, this person who is storing his blog um, actually on Instagram. And as you can see, he's experimented a lot really pleased to say that uh, he is one of the uh, current students in year 11 who will be joining our VTech course uh, predominantly for photography and image manipulation. You can see here some of the work that he's been producing over the year uh, but also some of the um, apps or the challenges, the notions of the challenges that I suggested before. So recreating uh, the Sistine Chapel ceiling there and um, also experimenting with Darker and the other apps that we've discussed. So as you can see, there's a lot of mileage here and the students do get a lot of value from it, as well as having something that they can take with them at the end. Well, I hope all of those suggestions and demos are of use to you and uh, that you're taking care and uh, you and your students are well. Uh, good luck for the next step back into the classroom, I guess. Um, take care and uh, it'd be great to see some of those, those apps uh, being used for some coursework in the future. Goodbye. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you're now back to me live. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that video uh, that I made for you guys. Um, but most importantly, I hope that it's of use to you and also inspiring that you can then uh, take maybe some of your own ideas and riffs on them and, and uh, deliver them to your students in your own unique way. Uh, of course, you knew, know your students uh, better than I. Um, I should just say now that we are now moving into the Q&A uh, session. And um, although you can't ask me your questions uh, verbally, uh, I do have the Q&A box open. So if you want to ask any questions, please do type them out and uh, I will try and get to as many of you as I can in the time that's left. Um, just while you're probably typing those questions, I should mention a couple of things. Um, first and foremost is that uh, there is some supporting documentation that has been uploaded uh, for your use um, uh, whilst we've been uh, watching the video. So uh, I'm just going to um, direct you to where that is um okay okay so i can see uh <laughs> um do i have a twitter i do have a twitter but i am such a luddite when it comes to twitter um i am afraid that uh gary i'm afraid that um probably i should use it a bit more i don't think i think the last time i looked at it was when i checked it about five years ago to sanitize it to make sure that there was nothing on there that shouldn't be and there wasn't thankfully um but uh yes yeah, so i'll have a little look at that uh maybe another day but um certainly I've, i can see your email um maybe we can hook up elsewhere 
Um, the eight millimeter, this is from Susan Young, the eight millimeter simulate, simulator app. Uh, I shall just bring up the list. There's, there's loads of these. There's, there's absolutely stacks of them um, for both eight millimeter and um, the uh, kind of VHS or Super 8 style um, ones I showed before. Um, I can't remember the website or, or the app name, uh, but there is one that you can download that will direct you every day to some free apps that come up on the App Store or, or App Stores, I believe. I mean, I run iOS, um, but that's where I got this one, which is why some of the apps I've suggested to look at are periodically free because every few months or so they want to increase their user base and you can get them in. But that one was called, uh, I shall just have to find it on the list. Um, of course, all of these apps will be available on uh, the list, will be available to you. Um, I shall tell you at the end of the session where you can find it. Um, sorry, I'm just having a little look. Uh, we have... I'm afraid I can't quite find it right now, but I'm sure if you type in 8mm into the uh, App Store search bar, it will bring it up. I've, I promise you there are loads of them. Um, one of them that came out, do you remember the film um, Super 8? There was a free promotional app that came out with that film. Um, just to promote it, I'm not sure if that's available, but it was certainly free then because it was promotional material for the film. Um, Christina um, has asked, how do you find the students engage with online learning in different subjects? Uh, well, of course, my the short answer to that is great, actually. I've, um, we use um, Microsoft Teams within my school, and we have done since a week before um, our Easter break, which was, of course, when we went into lockdown. And um, I, by the way, I should just reiterate, I have absolutely no affiliation with any of these apps or Microsoft or or Google or anything like that. So any app I mention, I promise you, I'm not getting a kickback for this. Uh, but Teams has proven to be exceptionally useful. I believe that there was a session earlier today that talked about um, the, the usefulness of Teams. Um, of course, there are some students who um, are slightly less engaged than others, but the most success I have had in the last four weeks of delivery is through use of these creative projects. In fact, the very last uh, one I did, we um, I got the students to hand in their work to me on Friday via private YouTube links. And um, that was actually a collaborative film, short film, that we all made a little section to, experimental film. Um, and then I combined them together. So um, to, to answer your question uh, really well, um, I just think that tools like these will enable, enable them to uh, engage a bit better if you're struggling. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, any tips we can use these apps in regards to teaching English? Uh, that's Zara. Um, I am actually a trained English teacher as well, although my specialty is media and film, of course. Um, I'd have to have a think about that and maybe come back to you. I hope that's all right. Um, I'm sure I can come up with something, maybe collaboratively with you. And again, I mentioned before in the video about cross-curricular uh, link-ups. Uh, I think I mentioned with art and history uh, being ones that maybe you could do um, uh, linking up with the classic pieces of um, art. Uh, kind of linking to the previous question, um, I think the more interested students are, the better chance you're going to have to engage them uh, when otherwise they could just be sending themselves on the hottest day of the year. And um, if you can join subjects together, we know when we're with them that works. So, But if you can do it virtually as well, um, that might work. Uh, I should mention, of course, that this all of these apps can be pitched to pretty much any year group really, that you're working with. Um, I've got students who are in our iOS photography club that I mentioned before, who are um, uh, year 10s and year 11s, those three boys who have uploaded their work onto their blogs, and they are our pipeline for our future BTEC students. Um, and of course, they love it. So um, that's useful. Let me see. 
what Fiona has said. Uh, okay, so she says, let's hope she's got enough storage on her iPhone to download all these apps, I think is what she mentioned. Um, just a little tip, actually. I discovered this the other day when one of my students said, sir, I don't have enough storage left on my phone to do your short film thing. Um, you can hand off apps now. Uh, if you've got a phone that's maybe got 32 gigs or 16 gigs or something like that on it, um, you can choose to hand off the apps, which deletes the app, but keeps the data. So particularly if it's an app that you haven't actually used that much, um, or you've got a project stored on it, um, but you want to use another one, you can hand it off. I think you go into the app settings, you can choose to hand it off. Uh, and then all you do is simply read download the app when you want to use it. And it means you don't have to delete it and lose all the data. Um, Ross, can you hear me? Yes, Joel, I can hear you. Ross, can I chime in just really quickly? Please do. Because we've got another um, we've got another question that's come in along the lines of Zara's question about English. Yeah. Um, it looks like another teacher interested in the same kind of um, teaching English. And I was just going to suggest potentially, she says, other than writing about images, and I was thinking um, along the lines of copywriting or marketing copy or tagline writing for um, for events. Sure. Um, so that's Darshna, I believe, asked that question. And she said, I'd like to know uh, what Zara is asking, too, about English. Please, regarding English, other than writing about images, uh, wonder if you could suggest anything else. Um, well, actually, uh, I don't know if, if this would work for you, but um, when we were going to be doing something called Unit 3, which was the external assessment for, for our subjects, digital content production, which, by the way, is an excellent course. I particularly rate it. Um, one of the components that we had to do for the, what well, the students had to do for the exam was create an animated masthead, which, of course, is copy, isn't it? Uh, but used creatively. So maybe that's something that the students could work on is not just come up with the, the wording, uh, which is, of course, so important, um, but also animated. Um, I have something I wanted to show you guys, but unfortunately we can't facilitate it today, is just to show you um, a screen reflection of, of what I've got on my screen, uh, because I was going to point you towards some uh, other resources and other things. One of them is actually just my YouTube channel. Uh, which I guess goes back to Gary Rose's question about Twitter. Well, I tend to use YouTube because visual arts, it's just easier to put a video up and pre-record. Um, if you want to, you're very welcome to search for me. It's just my name, Ross Beamish. Um, I've only got 154 su subscribers, but I've got quite a few views on there. Um, the only other Ross Beamish that I've found on there is a guy from New York who's quite a talented musician. I'm afraid that's not me. Um, but there is a video on there um, called... Sample Animated Headlines Demo. Um, and for you guys, specifically for English, you might find that one of use. Um, so that's just YouTube, Ross Beamish. Um, if you go to my videos, uh, you should be able to see that there. Sample Animated Headlines. Um, let me see if there's another question. also. Oh, um, Stacey uh, has uh, put another recommendation in of an app I should mention. Um, she says, um, Union is also really great for layering still images and is super reliable and intuitive, which, of course, is what we, what we need at this time uh, when we need our students to be a little bit more um, independent, maybe. Um, so she said maybe one for the list. Uh, well, hopefully that shout out has added it. Um, Just having a little look. Sorry, I'm just having a little look now through the, the other questions. Um, Ross, we're just out of, we're just out of time now. Oh. Just come to the end of the of the session. Sorry, I give you the uh, couple minute warning, yeah. but uh, my connection's been a bit dodgy. So sorry about that. It's my fault. Anyway. I'm sorry. I was I was looking at the questions rather than your your thing. May I just wrap up for thirty seconds just to point towards some other things? Okay, guys. Before I go and, and thank you for your time and also for your thanks that I've seen occurring there. Um, a couple of things. Um, for those of you who, like us, are moving away from Photoshop for various reasons, uh, you might want to check, um, check out Affinity Pro. 
There's a package there. I've just noticed that it's on special offer. Uh, half price now, um, $23.99 for Affinity Publisher uh, and so forth. And we personally are going to be moving to that in, in the department. We've also got for video editing DaVinci Resolve. So you might want to check that one out, an open source video editing platform. Um, and here's one for you for free. It's passed now, but hopefully they're going to do another. An online film festival called Films in Isolation, an at-home film festival. Um, this is one... I did with my kids. I think they're going to be doing another one before long, and I shall leave it there. So uh, thank you very much. Joel, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Ross. And I, um, I don't know if you mentioned that we've also got a couple of um, documents that you can download down to the lower left-hand side of your video screen, I believe. Um, delegates can download some um, lists of resources, free resources. We compi compiled a a nice long list of resources you can use um, with your with your learners whilst at home. Um, all kind of art and design and creative media relevant um, apps, software, um, inspiration, all kinds of things there. So please do um, download those. And thank you very much for attending this session. And for those of you who have attended numerous sessions throughout the day, we really appreciate it. Hope you found it useful. And I'm now going to hand over to Amy to close off the day. And thanks very much, Ross, for, for all of this. It's been a wonderful presentation, very uh, inspiring. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. It's been my pleasure. And thank you to our guests as well. Thank you, John, and thank you, Ross. That was great um, and, and such a great session. And wow, what a day. It's been fantastic. Um, and it's just been great to have so much of our educators join us today and really get engaged in the sessions. I think today we very much wanted the vision to be about sharing best practice. And that's exactly what's happened. So a huge, huge thank you to our speakers who volunteered their time and, and came along and prepared sessions to share that wisdom. And thanks again to our educators for joining us to listen and engage with that content and a big shout out to the Pearson events team for getting us all here um, and, and in this format that we weren't quite expecting it's been a huge success and I think um, my understanding is that you will have um, I think an evaluation which will be sent out so kind of you know do, do get that completed I think as I said at the start of today um, we, we definitely want to run more events and we'd love to tailor them to make sure they're absolutely useful for you and do stay in touch so do go along to the website and visit digital live 2020 um, at our Pearson schools and fe.co.uk website just to make sure that you can get access from everything to today so I think that just leaves it for me to say thank you again um, and keep in touch and stay safe thank you very much bye